Alrighty, what's going on guys? I'm Solo Banner and welcome back to Car X Drifting Online. So, in today's video, I'm going to do a quick little guide on how to correctly switch, okay? This seems to be an issue that everyone struggles with at the moment, uh, and it's actually a really, really easy fix. So, I did see a comment on the Facebook Car X group. A guy was talking about how he's got a good tune set up, he's got no issues catching the car, but when he switches, he always finds himself on the back foot and playing catch up okay and a lot of the comments that he was getting or the advices that he was getting were things like you need more power you need to lower your tire pressure in the rear you need to need to increase your positive camber in the rear so overall people were saying you need more speed and more grip so you can catch up quicker but you're kind of missing the point here it's not about catching up quicker it's about keeping that consistency and that proximity as soon as you switch all right you want to make sure you're as close as possible when you switch not having to re-catch up as fast as possible okay so I'm here to tell you that it's got nothing to do with your grip, it's got nothing to do with how fast your car is because honestly I've got some cars which are like 300 horsepower and I can keep up with some of the 1000 horsepower cars in the game with no issue. So horsepower has got nothing to do with it. It's all to do with your own skill in the game which a lot of people are not going to like because it's not really an easy fix even though it sounds like an easy fix. So you already know what I'm going to say, there's two reasons that you're having these issues and the first reason, which I always say on the channel, is being overly aggressive, okay? When you're being overly aggressive, you're not really thinking straight, you're just thinking about getting on that person's door and that causes you to make a lot of mistakes, that makes you ride higher than you really should on the car in front of you, which completely screw up the entire line and screw up the car in front of you as well when you hit them. Now the second thing is the position of your car to the car in front of you when you're tandeming, okay? So if you tandem on any sort of area right here, you're going to come into issues when you switch. Compared to if you ride the car in this area when you're tandeming someone, the chances of you having good proximity is so much more higher, okay? So when you're actually on the upper half of the car, when you switch, you have to slow down more, you've got to use more brakes, which means you lose more momentum. Compared to if you run the back end of the car, when you switch, you don't actually even need to brake. You just let off the gas for a second and you can get straight back on. So I'm going to demonstrate what I'm talking about right here against myself. I'm just going to do a little line and then show you what it looks like when you hold the front door and then try and uh, switch and then mimic. And then I'm going to do the same thing again trying to follow the rear end of the car and just show you how simplistic it is guys it's all you got to do is just tandem a little bit further on the back of the car and that'll reduce the chances of falling back that'll reduce the chances of taking out the rear quarter of the person in front of you and all of your issues will be completely solved Alrighty, so I'm starting in the chase position on this run just to showcase what it looks like when you're being overly aggressive and you follow way too far up on the car in front of you and you don't actually follow where you should be following when you're doing a chase run I'm also going to start off in a position of playing catch up so I try to fall back a little bit first before I get on his door so that's why I fall back at the start. So right here I try and slow it down a bit so I'm playing catch up right here just to showcase because this is what happens in most cases. I catch up, I actually hit the rear bumper there because I'm being too aggressive and I try to get on as close as possible to the front wheel. And obviously when you switch, boom, you hit. You can't slow down fast enough, doesn't matter how fast you brake. Now I'm in this constant state of playing catch up. I'm still trying to catch up right here, still trying to catch up. Now I'm finally caught up and already half of the track is gone. Okay, good proximity again. Try and switch, being too aggressive, not working with my brakes and I screw up the rest of the run right there. So now we're going to run through that same exact run except holding a proper line and not being so aggressive and trying to focus on proximity when it counts and not just trying to keep proximity 24 7. Alrighty so once again I'm in the chase position and I'm going to be a little bit less aggressive in this run and I'm only going to be aggressive when I feel like I should be aggressive which is normally on the longer corners when it's a short corner you don't have to hold that proximity as often you just want to try and keep that proximity on the larger uh, you know, just the bigger, slower corners where you can hold that proximity for a longer period of time and back off when you need to back off.
All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and replay the second one once again in a different camera angle, just to showcase how prettier it looks than the first run and why this actually makes such a big difference. It also makes it easier for you yourself as a chase car to be chased when there's a whole bunch of other players behind you as well. Alrighty, there you go guys, hopefully you got something out of this video, hopefully you can go ahead and implement some of these and make your overall experience and everybody else's in the server a little bit better. And with that said guys, thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed it once again and I'll see you in the next one.